Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is it, part five of this five-part series on God's covenant with Abraham. And remember today, Abraham was a model, but Christ is the mold. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, teach us now to remember the example and the inspiration that we get from one another. But there is only one who gives atonement. There is only one who gives life. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. We say this because we spend a lot of time on the life of Abraham. And it is very easy. It's very natural for us to make, um, to take people who are there to inspire us. And, and rather than them just kind of serving as a hero, we make them a little holy, maybe a little more holier than they actually are. That's why I love the fact that in, the, in, in every example of a person that's listed there in that book in Hebrews chapter 11, the, the hall of faith, you can go back and find a story. In fact, I need to do a study on that, of a story of the B side, the other side, what they were like and what they were like apart from God to show that it's not them, but it was God working in them that allowed them to do these great things and to have the faith that they had. Same thing here with Abraham. Abraham is a model, but it's Christ. He is our mold. He's the example. You know, with ceramics or, or artifacts, in particular, um, my mom, you know, she grew up, I grew up you know, watching her do ceramics and eventually I got old enough where I actually did them myself. And now it's amazing to see full circle. Our children are artists. In fact, our oldest daughter is an artist and she's actually uh, in a ceramic class and she's finishing up college this year and she loves it and she does well at it as an artist. And she was talking about how the ceramic, uh, the, the artifact that, that it can be poured into a mold and how the mold breaks away and what you've got left is this unfinished product and then you, you paint over it and then you, you do your thing and you bake it and it comes out all pretty. That's who Abraham was. Abraham was like this, uh, this, this rusty um, artifact that, that the Lord said, I can do something with this guy. And, and I'm gonna use him as an example but remember that that model that he polished, that he painted, that he, he baked and that he blessed, it came from a mold and that's Christ, which means you and I, we can go into this same mold and come out of it just like Abraham came out of it. Not just looking good, but looking like God. See, in Genesis 15, 17 to 18, it says that when it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. After the Lord had had this conversation with Abraham, it says now that as Abraham has presented this offering, as the Lord has instructed him of these various animals and this sacrifice of faith in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. See, Abraham is the model. Christ is the mold because he says this promise, this, this promise is going to start with you, but it's actually going to be carried out in others. I'm going to do in others what I'm doing for you. The land that I promised you, I'm promising this to your sons. Your sons are going to walk on land that you are being promised. They're going to actually possess it. You're a model and I'm going to make them models and I want to make their children models so that what we all give the glory, not to other models, but to the mold, to Christ, the one who affords us the possession of the promised land. Look at it this way. In Romans chapter four, verse 11, and he received the sign of circumcision. Quiz time, who is the he? I hope we've learned it in the series. That's Abraham. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. I don't think we brought this up in the study. Watch the study because it's good, but we didn't bring up this point. That being that when Abraham was called, when he was promised, he was literally not circumcised. His circumcision did not make the promise. Remember, it was a token of the very real promise of the coming lamb and the reception of his righteousness by believing in him. That's real. But it was to us 
who also believe like Abraham, that we can receive the promise just like him because we're different models, but we all come from the same mold. And that's who we got to be looking to and leaning on. That's Christ. One more verse. This one is in Romans chapter four, verse 12, where it is a continuation of verse 11, because it says after the colons and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Do you see it? It like switched the allegory where we're going from us for Christ being the mold to now we follow in the steps. We, we follow in the footprints of Abraham, not to follow Abraham, but we follow in the footprints of Abraham to follow the one that he followed. And that was Christ. He trusted in the Lord and he trusted in the promise that he was going to have a son. And he trusted the word of God that if you believe in me through faith, you will be redeemed through faith in the coming land. This is why today, brothers, sisters, you and I, we are models. We may not be model M's. You might be model T's. You might be model C's. You might be model R's. You might be model S's, model Q's, model A's. Whatever your name might be, you are a model of the maker who is Christ. Oh man, the maker of what? Not just making us, I'm talking about from the beginning in Genesis, I'm talking about from making us again, being born again. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 now. We are made over after the mold into new models. That's you and me when we believe. So I appreciate the life of Abraham. I thank God for his example. In fact, how dare we miss out We've got somebody to look at and the, the, to see the footsteps and not just the footsteps of faith, but the failures and to see the mistakes and say, uh, I'm not going that route. I'm not going to go the, the Hagar Ishmael route. I'm going to go the Abraham route and I'm going to take my weak faith. I'm going to take all that I got and give it to him because I know little becomes much when I place it in the master's hands. That's what Abraham did. And that's what the Lord is calling you and I to do today, to receive the promise he has for you. I hope this has encouraged you to do just that. And that is to believe his word. He loves you.